Hello fellow food lovers. Today in this how-to series, I will be demonstrating how to cut meat for Chinese cooking and tenderizing meat. Okay, so I got a, a pork roast here. This is a pork shoulder. It's actually a bone in. It's got a big bone in the center and one side has skin on it. This is actually a very versatile cut that you can use for different Chinese dishes. So this is like a pork shoulder uh, roast. So there's a bone, there's a big bone in the center, and there's a, one side has skin on it. So I'm gonna actually cut an inch along the bottom of the skin. So an inch of meat below the skin. I'm not going to use this for Chinese roast pork, which is the stuff you see in Chinese barbecue places where it has crackling on it. A lot of times they use pork belly, it's already got skin on it, but this piece right here from the pork shoulder work, work very nicely for making Chinese roast pork. So it has skin on it. You can also use that to make barbecue pork, cha sale by cutting the skin off and using that inch of uh, pork for, for making cha sao. So I just cut off a big chunk of meat. I'm actually going to get cubes. So for cubes, you can make it into pork stew or more commonly for Chinese cooking, you would use pork cubes for sweet and sour pork, Cantonese style sweet and sour pork. For that, you need kind of big chunks. So that should be good for one serving to make uh, sweet and sour pork, which I'll be making coming up. Uh, uh, that's it. It's got a piece of fat in it that's totally fine. A lot of uh, places that make sweet and sour pork, it'll have some fat in it. There you go. Nice cube. Okay, that's uh, good for one serving for the sour pork. So the cubes, you can tenderize it. So the Chinese use baking soda to tenderize meat. So they use baking soda to tenderize pork, beef, and even chicken. So I added a tablespoon of baking soda over top of the pork cubes and I added some water and I mixed it in. So the baking soda solution will help to tenderize the meat. So I'm gonna put that in the fridge and leave it overnight. And the next day, the meat should be much more tender to use. Okay, so I cut off another piece of pork. And this one I'm gonna cut into thin slices. I just cut off that extra fat that mm -hmm. you don't need. So for stir fries, if you're using pork, pork slices, you want it to be relatively lean. If there's a bit of fat, that's fine. It should be relatively lean meat for, to use for pork stir fries. And you wanna cut it thin. So sometimes if you have to, to cut the meat thin, Is what a good thin piece right there, very thin. If you have to get it at room temperature, you might want to put it in the freezer for three, four hours, let it freeze a bit, and then you should be able to control the thickness of the slices quite well. So that bone has quite a bit of meat on it, but that's perfect for making soup. Okay, so there's that uh, piece of pork with the skin that I'm going to use for the roast pork. Like I said, if you want, you can cut the skin off and you can use that strip of pork to um, make cha sale or barbecue pork. But I want to save it. Okay, so that's the slices of pork, the thin slices I'm going to use for stir fry. So I'm going to add some baking soda to that as well and leave it in the fridge overnight. Yeah, so I'm going to add one tablespoon of baking soda. I'm going to add a little water. I'm going to mix that baking soda solution into the pork. And I'm going to leave that in the fridge overnight. And it should be nice and tender for, for tomorrow for making a stir fry.
Okay, so I have a beef steak here. So for the roast, you can cut it the same way with beef and with pork. And same with steaks, for both pork steaks and beef steaks, you can cut it the same way. So with steaks, because it's a thin cut, and you want kind of uh, thin but wide pieces for stir fries, I cut the steak at an angle. So it, it makes the pieces as wide as possible and as thin as possible without cutting straight down. So notice I'm cutting at an angle. So that's the way you want to get the pork, uh, the beef slices out for a stir fry. So I'll just cut that piece of fat off, it's a little too much. Yeah, so cut it at an angle and I'll give you wide strips. At the same time, it'll give you thin slices. Okay, so even if steaks, just like uh, roasts, um, with beef and with pork meat, same way to tenderize. So I put a tablespoon of baking soda over top of the sliced up meat, I add a bit of water to make a baking soda solution. I mix it in so that the baking soda solution, the baking soda solution is mixed in with the meat. And that goes in the fridge and it sits at least overnight, but even better 24 hours in the fridge. And then before you use it, before you uh, marinate it to um, put it in a stir fry, make sure you rinse the meat off. Fill that with water, tap water, and rinse out the meat so that you can get as much of the cornstarch out before you use it, before you marinate it. Otherwise, you're gonna get that kind of bitter taste from the baking soda in your stir fry, you don't want that. So rinse the meat out before you use it. Okay, so cutting chicken for stir fries, same way. Uh, you cut the chicken breast at an angle, just like you would with a beef steak or a pork steak. And that gives you wide slices as well as thin slices. And if you find that it's hard to cut thin slices with a chicken breast, same with steaks or roasts, you can put in the freezer for two, three hours, and if it's half frozen, it'll be easier to slice it. So if it's completely frozen, it won't work that way, but if it's, if it's half frozen, it's perfect. And uh, yes, for the chicken, you can also add corn you can also add baking soda to it so yes uh, chicken just like pork and beef you can add a tablespoon of baking soda to it and mix it in with water and leave it on the fridge overnight and I'll make the chicken even more tender Okay, bon appetit.